Hello everyone. On this video, you will learn how to create a basic caching mechanism using ASP.NET Core Web API in Visual Studio 2022. First thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope, open up Visual Studio 2022. I will create a new project and it's going to be ASP.NET Core Web API. You can do a search on top here. You're going to find the same results. I'm going to double click on that and click next. I can call test uh, or caching. Next. Go ahead and click create. Give it a second. All right. So it looks like a project is up and running. I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and run it just to make sure it builds. This is all default from the new Visual Studio 2022. So yeah, I see there's one, um, there's one controller. It's called weather forecast. We're just going to leave as is. We're not going to touch it. First step is we're going to head and create our new, a, a, a new cache model class. We're going to make it static so we can use it everywhere in our code. All right, go ahead and click add and then class. And we're going to call it cache model. Hit enter. This is just a brand new class. We don't have to worry about anything yet. First thing we're going to do, it's going to make a static so we can use, we can use to call our cache data from everywhere in our code. So we don't have to instantiate a class to pull this from everywhere. Okay. Make static. Our right, first thing is going to be private, private static. Now we're going to use this thing called I, I memory cache. If you don't see it here, just hover it above it. Oops. And it's going to, you make sure you use using Microsoft extensions dot caching dot memory and go ahead and click on it. And then memory cache. Equals new memory me, memory cache and a new memory cache options. There you go. So this is how you initialize it, our memory cache instance. The very first thing we're gonna create is to to add an item to a cache to the cache. Okay, so it's gonna be public static. Void add. So we have to pass a key and then we have to pass a value. We're going to do integers for this example because it's a little bit simpler. So basically, when we call this, we're going to have a function. We're going to have this function. We're going to have a function called add and we're going to pass in a key, like identifier to the cache, and we're going to pass in the value. So the first thing we need to do is add a cache cache at expiration options, okay? So we're gonna call it cache expire options. It's gonna be a memory cache. It's gonna be on the options here. Memory cache, let's see. Entry options. So we're going to set this to a brand new object. All right. So absolute expiration, we can just do offset. So we can just do daytime dot now dot add seconds. So this is pretty much it's the time it's going to expire in 50 seconds. We're going to add 50 seconds here. Item priority. We want to do high priority. And sliding expiration, we're gonna do time span. Let's do like 20 seconds. Ah, let's do like 20 seconds. So basically these are the options of your cache. Whenever you add this item, this cache item here to your cache mod model, there's an absolute expiration. There's a priority of the cache when it's gonna get deleted and a sliding expiration. Okay, you, you can add them or you might you might choose not to add them. It's either up to you. Okay, so now go ahead and add. To add, we call memory cache, which is, you know, this object here. 
and then it's gonna be set. We're gonna set the key. So we wanna pass in an identifier for this cache and the value, which is we're gonna, it's gonna be the integer that we're gonna be passed in. And we have to make sure to pass the options. That's it. This is all you need to do to add an item to your cache. All right. Now the next item is going to be how to retrieve an item from cache. It's, it's going to be pretty similar. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. I'm going to name this to get instead of an add. I removed the value. Remove this. I'm going to remove all this. Now I'm just going to do a var result equals. Don't worry about this. I'm going to change it. All we need here, it's a get. Okay. And remove everything else. Okay. That looks pretty clean. Now, when you return, as you can see, the get really returns a, a, an object, really. Uh, it could be a nullable object. As you guys can see it here, it could be a nullable object. For, but because we know we are pushing a integer, I'm just going to convert. There you go. I'm just going to convert to integer. Okay. Oops. Actually, I have to make sure I return an int here. I'm just going to convert an integer. So that's pretty straightforward. Here you're passing the identifier of your cache to retrieve what you're looking for. And the last item on this example, it's going to be to remove. To remove is going to be really straightforward. Pretty simple, just like as get, you just add remove. I'm just gonna name it remove. And actually, instead of remove, let's do delete. And I'm gonna name it, instead of an integer, it's gonna be a void, it's not gonna return anything. All right, and this is really even more straightforward than the get. All you need to do is remove, and your class, it's up and running. This is all you need for this basic example. There's a lot you can do here. Um, just a brief explanation. In here, you can pass a uh, like a dictionary, a list, an array. You can pass whatever you want. You can retrieve all that from anywhere in your, in your code as long as the class is declared as a static. All right. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm just going to use a preset. I'm just going to use a preset controller that's already here. Okay, sorry. Right. So on this controller here, um, at the bottom here, on the get, I'm just going to call my cache model dot add. I'm going to add a test. Oops. Test ID. It doesn't really matter what you do. This is my cache ID, right? And I'm gonna add number 55, 50. All right, so on this model, on this controller, I'm adding a cache with a test, with a key of test ID with the number of 50. Right under here, I can go ahead and retrieve it. Let's go ahead and retrieve it. Oops. Result equal cache model, oops. Dot get now all I need is a test ID I don't need the 50 or anything so I'm gonna put the test ID here I'm gonna put a breakpoint here so you guys can see I'm setting it and then I'm retrieving it but before all right let's go ahead and run this and then we go we do a little bit more testing here with the new controller all right so swagger is up and running here just so you know this is a default with uh, ASP.NET Core in Visual Studio 2022, go ahead and click on the drop down here. Click try out and click execute. So as you can see here, the drop. I'm right here. I'm set. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and debug it. Go to go in it. As you guys can see, it runs it, and it sets the value. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna retrieve the value. Okay, let's go in there. Let's see what result is. No, now let's go ahead and retrieve it. Now result is 50. All right, that's what we're looking for. Um, now for a little bit more testing, so we can test a little bit more, I will create another controller. Um, it can be an empty controller. It's gonna be test 
task controller. So let's go ahead and then just grab this. Make sure the controller has everything that it needs. Let's do a public int oops, int get. And all right, so here we can just call our cache model dot get, and then we're gonna get that. Let's go grab that ID. Let's go grab this. Yeah, there you go. Let's go grab this and do a return here. Actually, I'll do var results equals, and then you return result. And one more thing I'm missing here is going to be this here. Get integer. There you go. All right. So the only what I'm doing here is just to show you that it's getting cached in memory. Right, so from whatever controller you call this function, this the cache map model class, you're gonna grab the value. But all right, let's go ahead and get started. So I have to run this, I have to run this one first. All right, let's give it a second here. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's close this, let's do a uh, rebuild. Make sure everything's rebuilding. Yep, everything's good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, everything looks good here. Get integer. Oh, controller base. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and run it. There you go. As you guys can see here, now we see the test controller and the weather forecast controller. I'm going to head and run the weather forecast first to set it. Doesn't matter. I don't really care what happens there. Okay, so now it's set. Now I'm, I'm going to run our test one, the new, newly created one. Go ahead and try it out. Execute, as you guys can see, it hit here. And now it's 50. So yes. we All right, the last example that I'm gonna show you guys, it's to delete. Okay, on here, I will go ahead and delete. So cache model.delete. I'm gonna pass in the ID. Now to show you guys that it has been deleted, I'm gonna head and call this one more time. Okay, save it, run it. Then again, I have to run this one first to set it. Now I'm going to have, I'm going to run the controller, the test one, execute. So I got the 50. Now I got deleted. And now I'm gonna retrieve the 50 again. It's not gonna be there. So it's gonna be a zero because it's an integer. All right, that's it for today, guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, just drop them below. Thank you very much, guys.